Back in the spring of 2014, a composer and a lyricist named Keith Gordon emailed me to ask about adapting my debut novel, Mary Modern, as a stage musical along with his co-writer, the playwright Martin Casella. Now I have to give Keith's husband Barry a special shout out here because he is the one who read Mary Modern first and thrust the novel into Keith's hands and said, you must make this novel into a musical. Marty and Keith organized a table reading in New York in the summer of 2017 with Keith at the piano singing all the songs. And that day was one of the most thrilling days of my entire career, of my entire life. The music captured the mood of the story so perfectly. All the actors were fantastic. My bus was late getting in, so my agent, who is the best agent in the world, brought me takeout, perfect vegan takeout. Marty changed the ending, having given me a heads up that he might do it. And I have to say, I preferred his ending to my original ending. I totally whooped out loud. I was so happy. Ah, oh, it was such a magical day. You can listen to one of Keith's songs from the musical over on his YouTube channel. It is a cozy holiday song. I'll drop the link above and below. I am still keeping the faith that we will see a full stage production someday. I wanted to tell you about my experience with the Mary Modern adaptation because it was such a positive experience of relinquishing all creative control and allowing other artists to come in and reinterpret and embellish and continue to build out the world that I had created originally. And honestly, it solidified my resolve to never adapt my own work for any medium. First of all, despite the Immaculate Heart scene written as a screenplay that I showed you, film is not my medium. I'm too much a novelist to want to put the work into learning and mastering the craft of screenwriting. Secondly, my creative vision is limited by the time frame that I have to develop and execute a narrative. I don't spend more than two or three years working on a novel because one, my ability to make some semblance of a living at this depends upon my productivity life under capitalism, what can I say? And two, I always have more viable ideas that are patiently waiting their turn. So even if I were to revisit old work with an eye toward adapting it, I'd have to overcome the boundary lines of my original vision, which may very well have calcified into self-imposed limitations. It's much better for the story if another writer, a writer who is sympathetic to the work, of course, can build upon and build out that original vision. So for a musician like Keith or for a writer like Marty or Dave, the possibilities are still fresh. Truth is, I never could have written the script that Dave has come up with. He has added so much depth and dimension and the result is a lot richer than what I originally conceived of a decade ago. It's a weird kind of collaboration, and yet it's not a collaboration at all because one writer is generating new work that is interacting with and responding to the work of another writer that for them, for me, is long since done and dusted, right? Ugh, and the result is utterly extraordinary. Okay, let me circle back here. Kai asks, can you talk about the process of your book being chosen for adaptation up to its current point of now being in film production? How did you first get approached about the possibility of a film adaptation? What was the process like for you as the author? My producer, the acquiring producer, Teresa Park, got in touch with my agents in the spring or summer, summer, early summer, of 2015 uh, and the novel had only just come out in March of 2015 and we had we had a call and we agreed upon the film option and then Dave Kajanik was on board um, before that time next year so he was on board co-producing 
wasn't sure if he was gonna write, but he was co-producing by the summer of 2016. Teresa knew that I wanted to be completely hands-off, which of course makes their jobs much easier. And that said, Dave and I did have a couple of calls in which he asked me to tell him what did I most want to see in terms of you know the themes that I wanted not just preserved but drawn out, made more explicit um, than what I had been able to achieve with the novel. And here we are a few years later with the script finalized and the film in the can, as they say, and I have to tell you that he absolutely aced it. Here's the thing. Dave didn't have to listen to me but he did he listened very carefully and he has been so kind and so respectful throughout this process it's been an absolute delight interacting with him from beginning to end and oh dave i adore dave Quick side note here, if you haven't seen The Terror, I cannot recommend it highly enough. When I visited the set, Dave was talking about how I was the first link in this chain of marvelous creativity. You know, we had, I mean, like upwards of 150 cast and crew members on this set, right? And each of them were giving it their all. They were bringing their A game and it was absolutely humbling for me to be able to sit there and watch it all unfold. But getting back to what I was saying in the intro video about Dave and Luca improving upon the source material, I, I truly do feel that I contributed the initial pencil sketch and that there is a team of geniuses who are currently working on their own masterpiece right now. And again, this is not to knock my own work. It's just that for me, creatively speaking, bones and all is ancient history. And so my head and my heart are living inside my time travel universe, my time travel screwball comedy. And so that's where my ambition lives these days. But circling back to the timeline, through most of 2019 and throughout 2020, all I knew was that Dave had finished a solid draft of the script and that Teresa was still working hard to bring all of the required elements and players together. So I was completely surprised. I was as surprised as anybody else when the news broke at the end of January, 2021. Kai asked a follow-up question, which I think I've already half answered in a roundabout way. Adapting a book into a film usually means many changes. So far, what can you tell us about Bones and All's transition from page to screen? There have been changes, all of which I love and wish that I had written myself. And so I can tell you that the film will remain faithful to the soul of the novel, absolutely. And I'm sorry that I can't say more yet, but I'm really looking forward to speaking more candidly and more specifically with you about all of this stuff once the movie's out.